Welcome to the UVic Library's Digital Scholarship Commons Introduction to Infographics with Canva. Just to give you an outline of what we're going to do today, we'll start with why we might want to make an infographic, then talk about planning your infographic, spot some mistakes that are common for people who make infographics, and then talk about how you can tell your story in a concise and compelling way in the infographic form, and then we'll uh, do hands-on activities after that. So why would you want to make an infographic? Infographics have the ability to dissect and highlight important aspects of a complex subject and also sustain the attention of readers while doing so. Infographics help cover heavy topics in a more enjoyable way, as you can see in this example of a pretty sad topic, which is plastics in the ocean harming uh, wildlife, fish, and whales. People often look at an infographic rather than read a text-heavy article containing the exact same content. Visuals help the readers process the content more efficiently, and this Beatles infographic is a great example of that, using a tree-like structure to show who wrote uh, the different Beatles songs when. And making infographics can help you anchor your story in the audience's memory so that they'll remember it a day or a week or a month later. A well-crafted infographic is much more likely to have broad public impact than simply a research paper. But what we suggest is you do both. Write your academic paper or article and then create an infographic that links back to your paper for people who want to go deeper or who are truly interested. This also facilitates sharing on social media platforms that privilege images, like Instagram, for example. You wouldn't start building a house first without creating a plan for how large you want the house to be, where you want the walls, windows, and doors to go. It's the exact same thing with an infographic. So will this bathroom door work? Well, of course it'll work. Would you plan to do it that way? Probably not. So when I plan an infographic, I typically use a pen and paper to sketch out the important points from the paper or the article uh, that I want to uh, highlight in the infographic. And then I doodle possible graphics before I start working in Canva. Now here are some examples of infographics that maybe don't work the way they were intended to or could be improved. So this first one, what do you see there that might be wrong with this infographic? It looks visually pleasing, generally, but if you notice the numbers here don't add up to 100%. Uh, typically, if you're going to use a pie chart, you want the, the numbers in the chart to add up to 100%. But how could you get a chart that adds up to more than 100%? Well, in this case, uh, they probably conducted a survey where they could select multiple options. So, so in that case, you could have people selecting multiple items, and when you add up the responses, you get more than 100%. Traditionally, you'd probably want to use a bar chart or something similar to that rather than a pie chart for data like this. So what's going on here? Um, obviously, it's a bar chart. It looks visually pleasing. You've got uh, graphics down at the bottom here that uh, help you understand what each of the categories is. Uh, but you'll notice here, or it's a little harder to notice because there's five categories, but these add up to 100%. Typically, again, if you're going to have a numeric set that adds up to 100%, traditionally you'd use a pie chart to indicate that. So you can see more easily see the relative size uh, of the categories. In terms of other charts that you might want to use, uh, generally speaking, if you're going to be comparing values, you'd use a bar chart or a line chart. Um, if you're going to show the individual parts that make up a whole, like they're doing in this chart here, typically use a pie chart or a stacked bar chart, perhaps. If you want to understand how data is distributed, uh, a scatter plot or a line chart or a bar chart, uh, typically a scatter plot for data distribution, uh, uh, is what is done. If you want to analyze trends, a line chart or a bar chart. And lastly, if you want to comprehend the relationship between data sets, a uh, line chart, scatter plot, or a bubble chart might be appropriate as well. 
So what's going on here? Uh, this is sort of hard to read. There's a lot of information, probably too much information here. So they're looking at percent job losses post-World War II, uh, which is fine. Uh, but there are so many lines with different colors, it's hard to really read them well. And the dates here aren't of the same interval because they're looking at recessions here. So one thing that they might consider doing is not include every single recession, maybe include the major ones, four, maybe five tops, uh, to give a, a sense for, we got the 1980 recession there, maybe drop the 1981 recession, or include it. Depends on what you're trying to uh, display or to show uh, your readers. Anyways, just too much going on here. Not easy to see uh, what story that the person's trying to tell that created this chart. So what's going on with this one? Again, it's this one's visually pleasing but uh, and attractive, but maybe a little bit too complex. It's hard to understand, at least for me, to understand what they're trying to uh, communicate. Another issue here, we've got this icon here, the blue icon with the little generic people. Um, anyone know what that is? You probably have to be of a certain age to recognize that. And that's not LinkedIn, that's a MySpace icon, which was a social media platform in the mid to late 2000s. Um, so maybe a little bit of labeling. The other thing too, we've got dates around here with things on the outside, and then we've got two dates on the inside with another radial uh, description here. And it's, again, uh, they've sort of, I think what they've done is they've smushed two data sets together to try to create one unified chart, but I don't think it works very well. Maybe they would have been better off creating two or three separate visualizations in the one infographic to tell their story rather than making it a bit confusing the way they've done it this way. So what's going on with this one? A couple of issues immediately. At first, it's not labeled, so we don't know what each of these categories is. A lot of different colors there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the other issue is it's hard to tell the relative size of things because they, uh, they're they not in uh, ascending or descending order. So traditionally, uh, unless you've got a specific reason to, you'd wanna start with highest to lowest or maybe lowest to highest so that you can see the relative differences between the different categories that you're displaying. So for example, on this next chart, few fewer categories and it's highest to lowest so you can look at the relative values of say the United States versus Russia or Canada versus Iran. It's also labeled, we have countries at the bottom and reserves and millions of barrels I believe on the, the side here which is a lot easier to read. Infographics tell stories or good infographics tell stories. So you want to tell your story in a compelling and concise way. You want to make it eye-catching, but make sure the important data isn't, not, isn't lost in the design. One thing to note is that the, the tool we're using today, Canva, it saves sort of like Google Docs. Um, you don't have to hit a save button. It just automatically saves as you go. And you can also collaborate like Google Docs. So you can have multiple people working on the infographic at the same time. The only difference is you, if you're working on a, a table or a graphic, no one else can work on that particular graphic or table. They can work in other parts of the infographic, but not the exact same one. It'll give you a, a warning that uh, you can't use that until the other person is finished editing it. One thing to note, uh, if you're going to be using uh, mapping data, Canva isn't really strong in that area. If, you, if mapping is important to you or mapping data is important to you, I'd take a look at PicoChart, which is very similar to Canva. So now we're into hands-on time. Uh, I'll put this link in the chat, but if you go to bit.ly slash DSC dash infographic, you'll see the handout for the workshop and you'll be able to get started on the in-class activities.